When people think of the king of the late Cretaceous, the Tyrannosaurus rex is usually the first dinosaur that comes to mind. After all, it did possess an array of formidable weapons and features that made it a nearly unstoppable force within its home of North America. However, the T-Rex was by no means the only large theropod to exist during the late Cretaceous. In fact, just 30 million years before it, if you traveled down to South America, you would come into contact with a theropod that was equally ferocious and nearly just as titanic as the T-Rex. This was the Giganotosaurus. This hellish theropod has seen a massive rise in fame recently, and it's not exactly hard to see why, as it truly was a remarkable dinosaur. A fact that didn't go unnoticed by paleontologists when it was discovered in 1993. The original specimen was actually found by an amateur fossil hunter who found a fragmented skull and postcranial skeleton within the badlands of Patagonia, Argentina. Despite his limited experience, he knew right away that he had found an absolute unit, and had the remains sent to paleontologists who estimated that the specimen, which would become the holotype, was a 70% complete mature individual. Like the fossil hunter, they too were shocked by the size of this theropod and quickly gave it a name that reflected its monstrous size, Giganotosaurus carolini, meaning Carolini's giant southern lizard. However, the size of this monster did not just fascinate its founders, as its discovery quickly led to a rekindled interest in large theropods across the globe, and even led to the resurgence of a debate which sought to answer how large could theropods truly get? Within this debate, it became very clear that the Giganotosaurus was one of the largest theropods and predators to ever live. But despite its 70% complete remains, no one could agree with just how big it truly was. And to this day, even with additional material, there is not a complete agreement to its body size. Although, no one denies that this was an epic beast with the most current research estimating that an adult would have measured a staggering 43.3 feet or 13.2 meters from head to tail, while standing 13 feet or 4 meters tall at the hips. This implied that the Giganotosaurus was about as tall as an adult T-Rex and actually outclassed it in terms of length. However, the T-Rex does still hold an edge in body mass, as it was the more stockier of the two and possessed a wider torso. Yet, the Giganotosaurus was by no means a lightweight, and individuals are believed to have weighed between 8 and 8.4 tons, with some even speculating that larger individuals would have exceeded these numbers. And at this weight, the Giganotosaurus was not only the largest predator that South America has ever seen, but it was also the second largest terrestrial carnivore to ever exist, only being slightly overshadowed by the tyrant king, T-Rex. To put the Giganotosaurus's extreme size into context, the polar bear, which is the current largest land predator on Earth, is significantly smaller, with this mighty theropod being over 10 times heavier than the average sized male polar bear. And what makes the Giganotosaurus all the more impressive is that many paleontologists agree that the largest individuals are yet to be discovered, as some fragmented remains have provided indications of larger specimens. One such find involved giant teeth which were 8% larger than those of the holotype. Paleontologists estimated that these teeth belonged to a Giganotosaurus that had a 1.95 meter or 6.4 foot long skull, which if accurate would make it the largest known theropod skull from a length standpoint. Unfortunately, without more remains, it's impossible to tell how big this individual really was. But what is clear is that the Giganotosaurus as a genus possessed titanic skulls, with paleontologists believing that the average one would have come in at around 1.8 meters or 6 feet long. Like its body size, these measurements meant that the skull was longer than that of the T-Rex, yet lighter in weight. This lighter and agile build granted the Giganotosaurus an improved level of flexibility when maneuvering its head around. However, it also led to a weaker bite when compared to that of the Tyrannosaurus. Yet, this didn't detract from the deadliness of this super predator, as it didn't rely on a crushing bite to kill like the T-Rex, but rather a slicing one. The Giganotosaurus was equipped with over 70 large teeth that were sideways compressed and highly serrated. With this dentition, it didn't need much to easily cut and slice through huge chunks of flesh, 
incurring rapid blood loss in a variety of prey. The Giganotosaurus also had another feature outside of its teeth that made it a force to be reckoned with, its neck. It had a robustly built neck that was proportionally large for its body, and lended itself to making it bite even deadlier, as the support the neck offered allowed the Giganotosaurus to viciously twist and jerk prey around during messy fights, shearing off more chunks of flesh without having to worry about injuring itself. Although, before the Giganotosaurus could dish out its hellish bite, it had to first capture a victim, and how it did this is a question that has created much debate. For a long time, it was thought that the Giganotosaurus had a good build for running and because it had very long and powerful legs, would have been a fast sprinter, with a 2001 study estimating a theoretical max speed of 31 miles or 40 kilometers per hour, making it one of the fastest theropods to ever exist. But, this idea was challenged when new research proposed that the Giganotosaurus was simply too big to run, and instead was more of a speedwalker that did not participate in high-speed pursuits. Juveniles, however, were probably capable of running, but this age window of being able to sprint was likely limited, as studies on the Giganotosaurus have revealed that its metabolism was comparable to that of a one-ton mammalian carnivore, indicating that it was a rapid grower. Though, this speedwalking conjecture didn't mean much for the Giganotosaurus, as paleontologists believe it wasn't interested in small fleeted foot prey anyways, rather titanic sauropods and other large herbivores. Armed with its immense size and deadly jaws, even the largest of sauropods may have had to fear the Giganotosaurus as juveniles, and adults were perhaps not safe either, as unfortunately for them, the threat of Giganotosaurus was possibly multiplied through pack hunting. This notion doesn't actually stem from the Giganotosaurus, but rather a very close relative, the Mapusaurus. This too was a South American theropod that fascinated scientists as multiple individuals were found together. These individuals were of different ages and sizes, leading some to believe that they were part of a pack, instead of a random gathering. And because they were close relatives of the Giganotosaurus, these paleontologists think that it must have been a pack hunter as well. Hunting in packs would have also made sense given the amount of sauropods that shared its environment, and would have made fully grown adults a possible kill. If it wasn't a social creature and did hunt by itself, this nightmare was still the undisputed apex predator of its environment. A fact that isn't surprising as it belonged to an infamous group of theropods known for becoming some of the most dominant Cretaceous predators, the Carcharodontosauridae. Being a member of this family meant that the Giganotosaurus was an allosaurid that was more closely related to the Carcharodontosaurus than either Synraptor or Allosaurus. Additionally, it was placed in a new subfamily named after it, the Giganotosaurinae where it would have been joined by its South American relative, the Mapusaurus. Many in this family grew to giant sizes, but none rivaled the Giganotosaurus, who was by far the largest member. However, the Giganotosaurus wasn't just all bronze and no brain, as it didn't just have the largest size, it also possessed the biggest brain, which was proportionally bigger when compared to other members such as the Carcharodontosaurus. This has led to the idea that it wasn't just some dumb big brute, but perhaps an intelligent large theropod, giving it one more advantage over its prey. Regardless, brains or not, the Giganotosaurus definitely had more than enough tools to completely rule its ecosystem of South America. Specifically, fossils have shown that it inhabited what is present-day Argentina during the early Cenomanian age of the late Cretaceous, approximately 99.6 to 97 million years ago. Its habitat was warm and experienced distinct dry seasons as it was part of an ancient desert that existed during the time. However, the habitat of the Giganotosaurus was a haven in this desert, as it was peppered with lakes, rivers, and streams, with some parts of this ecosystem resembling a swamp. Life was extremely diverse here, and many dinosaurs called it home. Some of these included the sauropods Limesaurus, Nopsa spondylus, Rheosaurus, and Andesaurus. Contrary to popular belief, right now there is no conclusive evidence that the Argentinosaurus lived alongside the Giganotosaurus, although a massive unnamed titanosaur has been found, leading some to believe that it was either a very close relative or the Argentinosaurus itself. There were also non-sauropod herbivores in the form of unidentified ornithopods, which included an iguanodont, 
Other theropods in the area existed as well, including the Ecrixinatosaurus, Buitreraptor, Alnoshedder, and two other unnamed theropods. While carnivores were clearly plentiful, none held a candle to the Giganotosaurus, with the second largest carnivore in the environment being only half the length of the king and ten times lighter. This meant that the other predators probably had different niches and preferred smaller, lighter prey, while leaving the large herbivores to the Giganotosaurus. The small prey could have included the non-dinosaur animals that were present, such as pterosaurs, turtles, fish, primitive snakes, frogs, notosuchians, rhynchocephalians, and even mammals. Late Cretaceous Argentina was truly ruled by the Giganotosaurus, but not even the second largest terrestrial predator of all time can last forever, as it seemingly disappeared some 97 million years ago. As of now, there is no good idea of what led to its demise, and no extensive research into the topic has been done. But hopefully, as time passes, we can find out what took down one of the most intimidating predators and dinosaurs to ever live.